Hello, this is Ukraine on Air. My name is Yuri Mazur and this is Human Stories. We will tell the stories of the real people, the people who escaped the danger during the Russia's invasion in Ukraine. Today we have with us Vasil Sich, who is a PhD student in National Institute for Strategic Studies. Hello, Vasil. First of all, Vasil, thank you for joining us. Thank you for finding time to tell about your experience. This is what we value most of all, human stories about the real humans. That is, you are the main person today. So would you please tell us a bit first about uh, what happened with you before? Where did you live? What did you do during the peaceful time before the war started? Yeah, hello, thank you for the invitation. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I live in Kiev, in uh, East Bank of Kiev. Uh, so, but my grandma and my mom live uh, in Bucha, close to Nimishaiver, this one, uh, this direction. Uh, so, like uh, in the day before, I I, I like to go to there to visit them. So, uh, and that's why I stay there in Bucha. Yeah, but regularly I live in Kiev. In, in East Bank. So, yeah. So, do I understand correctly that you were just accidentally in Bucha, the out, the suburbs or the outskirts yeah. of Kiev, right? This is for, yes. for our audience who maybe doesn't know the geography of Kiev. Bucha is just a little satellite kind of a city of uh, of bigger city. So, you accidentally found yourself during the beginning of war just in Bucha, right? Yes, yes. Uh, the day before in Wednesday, I'd like to prepare for my job interview in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, and I'd like to take some documents from my grandma. And uh, like morning, suddenly my friends call me and say, OK, war started. And I what's uh, and I even can't understand that it's true. I think, oh, my God, maybe it's some fake news or something like maybe you remember this. Uh, Thank you with murder of journalist Babchenko. And I think, oh my God, I, I can't believe first few hours that it's real true. But did you have any premonition of that? Because the rumors about the war which would start uh, has, begun, has begun rather uh, long before the actual beginning of the war. The people were a bit of afraid uh, from since the 16th of uh, February, I guess. And uh, when it finally started, nobody really could believe that it started. Did you have any feelings or a kind of being worried about what could happen? You know, like uh, war already in Ukraine, eight years, and everyone already thinking, oh, it's regular life, it's okay, war already going on. And you no know, one can't believe that it's true that it will be because uh, it's so irrational situation. So it, it was irrational step from Russia and uh, no one can't believe even me. I think, in, um, I think it's some of uh, maybe manipulation or like informed campaign from Russia. And I can't believe that it's true. Yes, definitely. We still can't believe what's the rationale of that crazy dictator. Nobody understands what he means by all of those actions, which are definitely cannot be supported by anyone. Still, uh, would you please tell about the first hours? Uh, did you hear the first shelling of uh, Kiev? And uh, what did you think instantly at the moment? Um, first of all, I uh, I was in my house. I read my documents preparing for a job interview till I think maybe 2 a.m. And uh, I tried to go to bed and my friend called me and sent me war started. And my feeling, I, I can't understand. And first, maybe half an hour or maybe one hour, I'm just reading news and uh, I tried to understand it. And uh, when I understood that it's real life, that it's true, I called to my family, to my friends, uh, tried to do something. And my first step, my, me with my grandma, we take a car and go to the supermarket. and just in supermarket and i understood that uh, we are in this war situation because everyone there take like call to their families friends and say how are you what's going on are you okay and it was a crazy lines in supermarkets in pharmacy in gas stations and uh, i understood that we have to adapt to this new reality but uh, in that moment i can't understand what does it mean this reality i think in this maybe two or three days and it will be end but in that moment actually i i can't understand what's the, the what, what does it mean this war situation and how it will be influenced in our everyday life and country life and, and other stuff i think no one can't understand 
I think we still can't understand how we can adapt to that, honestly speaking. Mm -hmm. But what were your first decisions after you went to the supermarket? Did you buy all the available sugar? What did you do just to survive? What did you feel you should do before uh, the warfare started to the full scale? Um, first of all, we tried to buy some the most important things, you know, like some bread, some cans of meat and some of uh, uh, wheat, for example, like and other stuff. Uh, uh, but uh, we didn't take um, much food because we can't believe that it will be so so far, far and so it will not be a long time. But uh, um, but it's still yeah. And uh, we we come back home and after then we start to read news and we're thinking that mm, maybe something will be in Kiev, maybe something will be in western part of Ukraine. But here we are more more, more safe place than, for example, in Kiev or somewhere in the western part of Ukraine. And so that's the, the, the situation is being. Well, you mean the eastern part, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eastern, yeah, eastern, uh, eastern, sure. Yeah. Uh, so you consider that Butcher and kind of other satellite mm -hmm. towns of the Kiev city are much more safe and sound, right? Yeah, every, everyone thinking about this uh, and much of my friends come there and they think, you know, I think you, the, he, this place will be safe. It's so far from Kiev. It's around like 30 kilometers from, from there. Yep, uh, and uh, like first couple of days, it's still like more safe, we thinking because uh, uh, in the 25th of February, I think uh, we uh, hearing that some bombing been in uh, Hostomel. It's uh, but it was so far, and uh, uh, everyone been in Bucha and in Mishaeva, in Borzel, all, all people are thinking that first of all we will Hostomel, and our uh, next step will be Kiev. So like more and more and more people coming to this to our place and then no one want to go somewhere and first couple of days i think population of bush and suburbs uh, like growing in twice as your time yeah. well uh the one problem is the shelling another problem is the russian troops trying to encircle the city so uh, didn't you feel that they will try to send some of the infantry some of the regular soldiers through bucha to the city to the capital no, like in the first couple of days, no one thinking about this. I didn't think about this. Uh, uh, and uh, like, uh, I, I think people in Kiev also didn't think about this because people from Kiev been there and uh, more and more people from Kiev been in this area. Yeah. Well, honestly speaking, I still have lots of friends staying in Kiev and they are still sure that Kiev is one of the safest thanks to their air defense mm -hmm. systems, for instance. OK, let's come back to you. What happened then? When did the active warfare unfortunately reach the place with, where you stayed? Yeah, it uh, started maybe 27th of February, Yeah, when electricity and gas and water turn off in one moment. And uh, we understood that something, something going on wrong. <laughs> yeah, and so it, so it was a big problem. It was very, very suddenly. You know, in uh, in my area, it was no any Ukrainian troops, no, 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 no one. Just maybe like ten or fifteen percent from local defense forces, uh, and even them told us, okay, it's the, the most safe place. You can be here. It everything will be okay in a couple of days. Electricity and and uh, water and that. Uh, uh, stuff like that will be okay yeah but uh, in next day like 28th of february i think uh, uh it started bombing bombing like directly our place uh, yeah and uh, like no one no one were there no like no any troops ukrainian troops i mean uh, uh, but it was just bombing it's uh, like not just in, in close to my street like maybe like few streets far from me yeah so, so uh, did you have any shelter did you have a basement to hide in yeah we have like kind of shelter in my uh, own house i live in my own house uh, my mom live in a flat uh, like not so far from me but be like 15 minutes by foot uh yeah and she has shelter there but uh, uh you know uh, it's like uh, just suddenly in one moment uh, from 27 to 28, it was uh, totally situation totally changed. You know, like electricity, it was impossible to charge phone or whatever. 
and uh, it's like uh, uh, this bombing and these explosions uh, directly in our streets. And I think in like in the next day, I see like I wake up uh, because uh, it's like uh, I understood that in my street something going on. Yeah, and I uh, go out from my house and my neighbor's house was in fire and people tried to do something with this fire and uh, uh, explosions started directly in this moment when people been there and it was like j just in one moment from everything will be fine everything will be okay it's like electricity and water will be tomorrow the day after tomorrow but it's yeah. yeah, I see. Uh, as for the shelter, as for the basement where you had to hide in, how many people were there? Did you have any food reserves or, or, or water reserves there? As I said before, we didn't take much food. Uh, we didn't. We take. We, we had food, but it wasn't much food. Uh, it's uh, in shelter being me and my grandma and to her husband, like three persons. But in that moment that I talked before, like this. Uh, uh, explosions like around my house uh, like i don't know maybe like 15 or 20 people like go run into my shelter and uh, much of them still there uh, like a couple of days later because it was impossible to go to their own houses and yeah but, but uh, permanently being like three person in my shelter but how long did you have to stay there without even uh, going uh, up? Uh, how long did you have to suffer all of this? And, uh, uh, well, how did it happen that the older people uh, reacted to such a severe situation? Uh, the longest time when we've been in shelter is maybe like 40, 40 hours. Uh, yeah, it's it was before Russian troops come to like my uh, my area. Uh, yeah, and uh, it was really awful because it was so cold. It was maybe like two or three degree. And my grandma, for her, it was big shock. She can't understand. Like she she, she was really in shock. She even can't understand what's going on around. Uh, she was uh, everything okay, okay, everything okay, okay. And it was like like maybe forty hours. She even can't understand what's what's really in this what what, what to do in this situation. But uh, it was uh, like in this uh, first first days. But uh, I've been there maybe uh, um, around two weeks. But in next days, uh, everyone adapted. And uh, uh, in shelter, we went when like explosion was directly in front of our houses, and people cooked on the fire in the street. Uh, and people are trying to walk in, not so far, of course, but trying to walk in, trying to, 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 to take a fire in the yard and to cook something, to, to, to talk in some gossips in the street because it's like no information or nothing, you know, like in a fish tank. And you can't, can't understand what's going on. Is Kiev, does Kiev is still Ukrainian or not? It's no information and it's, it, it was really awful. So there was no connection at all, and you couldn't even uh, get in uh, touch with any of your friends or any other relatives who could stay in Kiev, right? Yes, first few days it was like this, because uh, as I say, my mom lived maybe 15, 15 minutes by foot from me, and I even can't go there because it was impossible, because every, everywhere was in fire, everywhere was... Uh, explosions uh, and people live just uh, me and some of a couple of neighbors around me and uh, we just talk with each other it was impossible to even go somewhere a little bit far to to ask what, what's going on in the world not just in the world in as a part of street yeah. it's hard to imagine that isolation honestly speaking uh, so you've mentioned that the russian troops came uh, so you haven't seen any ukrainian troops uh, approach your place so the first were the russians right yeah uh it yeah uh, after this bombing uh, it was maybe uh, three or four maybe five days this like huge bombing in my place and after then russian troops come Mm, and, uh, you know, uh, it, it was the first time I understood directly what does it mean bullets whistles overhead because they really whistles overhead because uh, when column of Russian troops which uh, 
going through our street. Uh, they are shooting overheads and shooting uh, uh, it's like on, on the on air and uh, everyone being in the shelter, of course. Uh, and we are thinking that they are going through our street because we are thinking in the street categories uh, and uh, going through the street and go to go somewhere, but they still in our area, they occupy at a local college and uh, to create some stop there. And uh, here yeah, they uh, hosted in the student's dormitory and uh, they've, been there, they've been there till now. Oh, they are still there, right? They are still there till oh, now, yeah. Oh, they have the headquarters there, as you said. I see. So uh, did you have a chance or maybe they insisted on communicating with them? What were their claims? What did they require from the peaceful civilians? Or they just wanted you to disperse or they wanted the worst? Did mm. they want to kill? Uh, no, it's, uh, you know, it depends on the human as like everywhere is normal person and not normal person as there. It's, uh, of course, we communicated with them because they lived in like, they, they were, were our neighbors. So, and uh, it was, uh, some of them was normal, normal guys, like 18, 20 years old. They even can't understand uh, what, what's going on, why, why are there, what's, what's going on, what was they doing there. And, uh, uh, they talk uh, to us that they don't want to be there. And there was, some of them were so friendly, but uh, they uh, talk that um, it's so different. Uh, for example, like Kadirovce, it's uh, not, not to contact with them. And uh, they told that uh, some of uh, uh, Russian troops, they are like more, uh, more regular than them. And so they, you, you have to afraid them and go to the shelter. And uh, I, you, you know, I don't, uh, I didn't uh, involve in this topic because I tried to, to, to understood what's going on with my mom, but people said that it depends on the uh, part of these Russian troops. So you, you've mentioned that some of them were just 18 to 20 years old. Yep. Those, were, those yep. were the young conscripts, the yep. ones which a Russian president claimed were never there. Yeah, it was just a uh, young, young man, you know, like, like children, they even, they, they really, they really can't understand what's going on. They uh, try to like to talk with people with something, they uh, give some food for them because it was, wasn't too much food. And uh, uh, some, some of them like try to try to communicate it like in a good way, uh, but uh, they, 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 they told like, uh, Tell us some family stories that okay i have uh, like my mom she's so afraid for me i like to go back home but but i'm here and uh, most of them they, they also talk that they don't want to die that's the biggest uh, the biggest problem for them that i don't want to die i don't want to be like into injured and i don't want to lose my leg or hand or whatever yeah, I see. Well, that's weird. Did they really not understand that they're entering the foreign country? Didn't they see the consequences of the shelling and uh, dead bodies, which they were the reason of? I think uh, they understood because, you know, like uh, their stories, it's already stories, people who already stopped like close to Kiev, they can't do nothing. So they would, would like to talk to us. Okay, we're so like young men, we don't want to to fire to like to uh, to fire you we don't want to to take be a part of this war but uh, everyone understood what's going on because like few days before they they talked that like everyone understand where they are and what they will be do here in ukraine that that's that was not just military training that that was yes. the real full scale invasion yeah. of ukraine right yes. i see so what has happened with your mom did you get in touch with her Yes, uh, it was maybe uh, eight or nine of March. Yeah, like this. Uh, um, and uh, I tried to go there because like everything more or less already been safety, you know, more or less safety. It was the explosions was with interval in one hour, not like every 10 minutes. So uh, we walked to her place. She was safe, she was okay. and. Uh, she come with me to, to my grandma place. 
Yeah, and uh, after then, when everything more or less stabilized, we try to think in how, how we have to go somewhere because uh, uh, it was too much with too much gossips about uh, people who would like to go out from our place, uh, and some of them were shooting, some of them were. Uh, like uh, lost somewhere it's like no contact with them and after this we try to do it to think in what's going on and what we have to do in, like next so how could you make any guesses how could you make any assumptions where to go to because you understood that you need a kind of a humanitarian corridor right to just to get out of bucha but where to go to if you didn't even know whether kiev was uh, already occupied or not Yes, uh, it, it was the biggest problem. Uh, when Russian troops come, come there, it's, uh, it was an opportunity to communicate with other persons or other people. And we uh, find a guy who has uh, uh, like a car which was like with petrol here yeah, and we charge our phones and to check information. I text to my friends, to my girlfriend, and uh, they start to call to Ministry of Reintegration that uh, uh, here in this city, in uh, this place, uh, it's like this situation, like many people, because you know, uh, I, I later I read that too much these uh, corridors being from Bucha, but uh, Bucha, for example, in from the city center, or for example, like train station or other, but Bucha is a huge, huge city with, uh, yeah, and it's not just a Bucha and Vorzel and Nimishaeva, it's a uh, place, it was. It was impossible to go to that to that place to, for this checkpoint for um, humanitarians, these corridors. But uh, uh, they they started to call, and many persons start to call to them to the Ministry of Reintegration to explain this here situation. And uh, maybe it was uh, 15 of March. Yeah, it was 15 of March when we tried to go out from from there the first humanitarian corridor but in the first day it was it was impossible because uh, something something wrong was on this communication with russian troops yeah when we like go out from the next day 16 of march rather often we hear from the news that the humanitarian or so-called green corridors are not working because as soon as russians make a deal with our authorities they can still fire at the corridors and people may die did you see any of those awful situations or safely and soundly you could get through yes it, it, it's true like uh, i don't know too much this green corridor humanitarian corridor was by shooting and uh, it was too much stories people who can't go because uh, they were died in these corridors uh, like one of my neighbors was died in these green corridors you know and uh, yeah but uh, it, it 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 was a risk it was uh, as safe as possible i think this that green corridor that we which we are going but and how much time did it take for you to get from Bucha to Kiev through the corridor in comparison with the peaceful time, of course? Uh, in peaceful time, it's maybe like half an hour, maybe like from half an hour, maybe no, if it will be Monday in Cork, it will be maybe 40, 50 minutes, of course, but half an hour by, by the green corridor, we are uh, um, maybe like four or six hours. It was totally crazy trip i think it's one of the most like rememberable trip in my life because it was uh, when we've been in these uh, buses uh this, sh this shooting started the bombing started and uh, our drivers uh, directly going through the field of corn and like in this i don't know in some in some field forest what, whatever it is and uh, we are lost in some this too much villages around the Kiev, and uh, no one can't understand wh where we are, where we have to go, and we just ask uh, local guys what like correct direction to this Bilogorodka, the place, who, this checkpoint of four people from this key region. Yeah, and so finally we are finally we're still alive. Uh, were there any checkpoints you had to cross during this trip uh, of the Russians or of our Ukrainian troops? Uh, it was not like a checkpoint. It was just a tank, tank with Russian troops, and some of them are going to the buses. Some of them are uh, take phones. 
uh, some of them, whatever. It wasn't like regular checkpoints. It was okay, like here is tank, here is checkpoint. So, like 50 meters and like other tank at its checkpoint. So, like, like this. And uh, we are finally, finally, we are meet uh, uh, Ukrainian checkpoint. It's close to Shetomirska Trasa. It was, you know, it was, uh, I don't know, it was one of the most happiest, happiest day in my life. I think it's, I, I never, ever, ever was not so happy to see Ukrainian policeman. It was like everyone would like to hug him and like crying, and it's it was it was an incredible situation. I, I never see this situation like this. So now you're safe, or you would say relatively safe. Now you're staying in Kiev city. Yeah, I I, I still in my home uh, in Kiev in uh, well, East Bank of Kiev. Uh, so from time to time, I hear of course some uh, um, explosions, but. Uh, I have electricity, I have water, I have, I don't know, whatever I need. Like, of course, the main basic things, but I'm, I'm almost safe. When you left Bucha, did you see many people who decided to stay or didn't have an opportunity to leave that? Uh, path? Yes, too, too much people still there and it's a big problem uh, right now. Like I tried to uh, to call to this ministry for integration for them because my grandma still there because she has a dog and she don't want to go without this dog. Yeah, and right now it's no any connection with her because no, when I've been there, it was uh, internet connection. It was like phone connection, but right now it's not any connection with her. And uh, I didn't call here to like maybe like, 10 days till 16 of March. So, but, uh, and in the ministry, they told that it's impossible to do something there because it's uh, one of the most dangerous place in this key region, one of them, of course. Mm, yeah, and uh, it's, it's impossible to do something there. Well, having survived such an awful, not only trip, but staying in the basement for such a long time, uh, seeing yourself even in such extreme conditions, what main lesson did you take out of all of that? Maybe for yourself, maybe for our audience. Mm, I think the most important lesson is to, the, the most important in your life, it's your family, your people around you and uh, their health and uh, like to, to, to be with your family and it to be in a safe place. And uh, because um, when I evacuated from my, my place, uh, I like all of my life been just in my backpack, my computer, my di ma master diplomas and that's all. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the biggest, the biggest lesson is uh, you, you, you have to be with your family and with, close loved one yeah thank you so much we are happy that you are safe that you now joined the people uh, who you love uh, we do wish uh, that your grandmother is in safe and well, with you again i do hope that she is okay and victory to ukraine thank you for finding yeah, glory to ukraine. thank you for your time thank you stand with free ukraine subscribe for our channel